Yeah, I think that the, the metaverse is um, a fascinating future. Um, and and uh, mind you, the metaverse doesn't exist yet. It's not there yet. Uh, you know, um, although you could argue that that what we are doing at the moment, um, this interview is sort of part of the metaverse because I am physically in Australia, you physically in in, uh, in Europe, um, and we are connected digitally uh, with each other and having this conversation. Um, and to me, the metaverse is this convergence of the physical and the digital, where the physical meets into the digital world and the digital meets into the physical world. Um, and um, uh, that's far beyond um, uh, uh, virt virtual reality. It's far beyond uh, 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 gaming, which, which you sometimes uh, hear people say. Um, it, it also includes augmented reality, but it also includes just the internet as we have it today, um, um, et cetera. And for me, the metaverse is therefore um, uh, very much the next iteration of the internet. Um, and, and that's something different than Web3. Um, and that's also, uh, I think, a, an important distinction that we need to make, that the metaverse does not equal Web3. Um, the Web3 is the, the infrastructure on which we build the internet, um, and Web3 means it's a decentralized infrastructure. Uh, the current internet is built on Web2 technology, which is centralized technologies, centralized uh, infrastructure. Now, and, and that's where um, uh, my, my, uh, my quest or my, uh, my drive or uh, my approach for an open metaverse comes from. Because as you mentioned, the current internet is anything but open. You know, it's controlled by um, uh, a, a few very, very big companies who control all our data, who control all our digital lives um, and, have, uh, and are almost all powerful uh, uh, when it comes to uh, um, our, our digital lives. Now, with the metaverse, um, we sort of have this unique opportunity, this one shot, um, uh, this one chance to, to rebuild that, to create a metaverse, to create an internet, which is there for us, for you and me, for us as consumers, um, and not is there for uh, the big tech controlling us. Um, and so my book is, is really meant as a blueprint of how can we create this open metaverse? What do we need to do to achieve that? Um, and uh, we have to be very um, uh, careful when we build the metaverse because don't forget when the internet first arrived, it was very much an open internet. Uh, yeah, when we talk about web one, the early, early days of the internet, um, it was very difficult to, to, to build a website. So you, you had to host your own data, you had to host your own website, you had full control over all this. Um, um, and um, it was very much in our own control. But because it was so difficult, we had centralized companies uh, standing up um, and, and being created who made it very, very easy for us. And that caused this explosion of, of, of economic growth um, and, and innovation. Um, but at the same time, you know, people um, sort of got used to this, this, these ease of services, which are all free of charge. Uh, but we all know that if something is free, it means that you are the product. Um, and uh, we sort of, you know, we're sort of sleepwalking into a world where uh, uh, it's either state surveillance or it's, it's corporate surveillance. But it's not that we are in control of our own digital lives. Um, and so with an open metaverse, I think we should try to reverse that. We should try to, we have the technologies now uh, available, uh, such as blockchain technology, um, uh, to, to take back this control from the big tech, from even states, um, um, and have full control over how we want to, to build our own lives. So that we have control over our digital identity, we have control over our digital assets, and we have control over, over our own data. And I think that is that's really important, because if we do that, then we are able to create this trillions of dollars of economic growth, which do not end up in the hands of, a, of, of, of a, a few big tech companies, but they can end up in the hands of everyone in society. Um, and that will really have a big impact, I think, on, on, on the global economic growth. So for me, you know, and I always mention that um, uh, an open metaverse is absolutely no guarantee. You know, um, it's very well possible that we will build the metaverse on Web2 technology. We don't need Web3 technology to build the metaverse. We need Web3 technology to build an open metaverse. Um, and I think that is very, very important to be aware of, because if we don't pay attention um, uh, while building the metaverse, we might end up in a worse situation than we are today, uh, where, um, uh, as we can see from the the, the well-known examples, Ready Player One uh, or Snow Crash, uh, the metaverse is owned by a tiny elite who have full control over our, over our, our lives. And that's something um, that I'm very passionate about that we should avoid at all times. Uh, we should create a metaverse that's for you and me. For, for me, I think the, the most important use case for the enterprise metaverse is digital, digital twins, by far. 
Um, um, in fact, I actually think that digital twins are sort of tier one of the metaverse. Tier zero being the physical reality. Um, and then if if you know digital digital twins are tier one, um, then the standards and protocols are tier tier two. Um, uh, so we need the standards and protocols in order to you know have this interoperability. Um, and then tier three are the all the applications, all the lenses that we can build on top of that. And um, uh, from an enterprise perspective, um, um, if we look at the future of work or the metaverse, the, the future of work um, is you know what what I uh, uh, count as the future of work is you know uh, data decentralization and automation, or in other words, data, blockchain, and AI um, uh, is really changing changing um, uh, what we do, it's changing the, the the type of work that we do. Uh, uh, well, the metaverse among others using digital twins, but also using VR and AR, is changing how we do that. Um, and I think that's a, that's a big and important uh, differentiator. So if we have digital twins, and this digital twin is basically a, a digital replica of a physical asset. And this physical asset can be um, uh, uh, something from a, a car, um, it can be um, um, a system of systems. So it can be um, um, a plane where we have different systems that are all interconnect and we all have a digital replica of, this, of themselves. Um, um, it can be a, an entire factory, it can be a supply chain. Um, as long as it's a digital replica of a physical um, a system, and we can then interact with that system in a virtual way. Um, and this can either be interaction using virtual reality so that we put on a virtual reality headset and we can we can change the um, uh, the robot, or we can we can control the, the car, um, and any changes that we do in the virtual world are reflected in the physical world. Um, or we can use augmented reality that we let's say we need to um, uh, fix a certain machine. Uh, we put on the AR glasses, and the AR glass tells us exactly you know uh, which which bolt to, to to screw, which wire to cut, and, and how to fix or or repair uh, that that particular machine without really needing uh, the the training to do so. So I think. Digital twins enable that. And there are a lot of examples of companies who use digital twins already in order to collaborate, um, to collaborate across borders. Um, and one example of a company that I think is, is, is doing really, really well in this is, is the car, car manufacturing company Volvo. So they use um, uh, digital twins to create the car, to design the car without even using clay models, but to design the car in, in a virtual environment with the designers who are dispersed around the world and they can create the car. Now, if they have created the car and they have actually built the car, uh, they then go onto the road with the car, but they use a, a, a mixed reality device um, to change the car while they're driving on the physical road. So they have a, 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 a they have a, a digital dashboard in front of them with a physical while well, driving the physical car, and they can change the dashboard while driving um, to see to optimize it for um, um, uh, for the best conditions. I think that's those are fantastic examples of using digital twins in your in your uh, in your systems in your in your processes within your organization, and um, you know of course the, the 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 more advanced you go here and the further you, you uh, the further you embrace digital twins and, and embed them in your organization, the more possibilities you can you can get and the faster you can change your organization. So I think digital twins are by far um, the most important use case um, for, for the enterprise metaverse.